The word of the day is Christian. Yeah, you guys, a Christian means that you are a follower of Jesus. Jesus. Being a Christian does not mean that your parents are Christians or that you check the boxes as you're Christian. No, it means that you chose to follow Jesus yourself, that you've made him your king and now you want to live like Jesus and love like Jesus. made up a fun object lesson about what it means to be a Christian using these nozzle heads and a garden hose. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. So in this analogy, the nozzle heads represent you. Maybe you're uh, this kind of nozzle um, or maybe you're that kind of nozzle. Or maybe you're like me, probably a, a bright yellow nozzle. All of them are different and uh, they all do different things with water, but on their own, they don't have any water. That's where the hose comes into play. The hose represents Jesus. Look, it's like a J for Jesus. And that still leaves just one more part of the story, and that's the water. The water represents the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I gotta tell you guys something about God and His Holy Spirit power. He does not need to partner with us. He is awesome and powerful all by Himself. God definitely doesn't need to partner with us. But it turns out He loves us and that He wants to. It's kind of cool. So when you decide that it's time for you to be hooked up to Jesus, and to partner with him and to let him be your king. Something really cool happens. Suddenly, you're hooked to the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks to Jesus, you're able to have that Holy Spirit live inside of you and actually come right out of you. Here we go. Wow! <laughs> it still will look like you. Maybe it'll look this way. Ah! Or this way. <laughs> but God partners with the individual that you are. Ooh, I'm watering the yard. God partners with the individual that you were made by him to be in order to show his love and promises to the world <laughs> around you. And when he does that, it always looks like love. It looks like good things, the good things that you're doing, but they're powered by the Holy Spirit thanks to the awesome work of Jesus in your life. And that's a whole different kind of love. That's a whole different kind of righteousness that's not powered by what a good person you are, but how awesome and beautiful the Holy Spirit in your life is. And this big, beautiful transformation just begins with you saying yes. You taking the first step towards Jesus. You knocking on the door. He's so excited to work and move through your life to do big, powerful, awesome things. <laughs> I'm soaked in water right now. <laughs> helper who's going to join me today. Are you there, special helper? Yes! <laughs> oh good, it's Super Roo, the kangaroo. Let's do our verse. Ready? It goes like this. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You want to say it? Let's do that part again. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your that if you decide that Jesus is going to be your king, then you're going to follow what he says. And if you believe that Jesus defeated death, then it's going to change how you live your life. That's what this verse says. Are you ready to dance? Yes! Yeah, let's do it! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Romans 10.10 
10, 9. If you declare with your mouth out, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. If you declare with your mouth out, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Romans 10, Romans 10, Romans 10, 9. If you Christian, this week is week two of our Pilgrim's Progress theme. And so we're going to dive back into our book and we're going to see what happens next. Remember last week, Christian had just been saved from the swamp of despair. Um, he had heard from evangelists that he needs to find the narrow gate by staying on the straight path. But he's under this huge sin burden. Let's see what happens this week. I hope that narrow gate gets here soon. This road is hard work. Excuse me, good sir. May I ask how you've come to carry such a heavy burden? And where exactly are you going? Well, I first noticed it when I started reading this book, but it's been getting heavier and heavier every day but this man named evangel said i could go to the narrow gate and have it removed uh, tsk tsk i knew this had something to do with evangelist he's always getting people to leave their family and head towards this narrow gate what do you mean shrimp there are so many more other ways to get there like just over there is the hill of morality Go over there and ask for the judge of morality, or his son, legality. Hmm. This burden is getting heavy. Is this legality and civility very far? Oh no, not at all. Just, just a wee bit over that little hill over there. worldly wise men, why did I ever listen to you? I 
am just a poor, weary traveler from the city of destruction trying to travel to the celestial city. I was told it was through this gate. I'm willing to let you in with all my heart. So after that, I made the mistake of listening to this kind of fancy person, worldly wise men. And that's when I left the path and nearly died trying to climb Legality Mountain. And I was sure you would never let me in here. I mean, I had messed up so many times. I'm really grateful. We are anyone that's that knocks at this gate to enter, no matter how large the burn may be. We never send them away. You're a good man, Christian. Now come with me. You still must visit the place of deliverance. I'll show you the way. Come on. The king has suffered pain and death to bring me life. Peace be with you, Christian. Your sins are gone. You have been forgiven. It's time for the adventure to begin. Well, I can't wait to see what the angel means by that. I cannot wait to see what the next part of the journey is. But first, let's talk about what happened this week. So poor Christian, he started off um, with a few missteps, didn't he? Yes. Uh, he ended up listening to Worldly Wise Men. Just because Worldly Wise Men was dressed so nice and seemed so smart, Christian ended up veering away from everything he had read about in the book, about everything he knew about the king that he was searching for, and he went searching for a way to deal with his problems his way. And so we saw him climbing up that mountain. That was awesome. Um, and, and that mountain represented us trying to just do good things on our own. A lot of times, like I've been talking about this week, people think that being a Christian means just doing good things. It does not mean that. It means having your heart completely transformed and being united with the power of God through the Holy Spirit. It's a big difference. And, and so when Christian tried to do it this wrong way, he could never reach the top of the mountain. We can never be good enough on our own. It's just impossible. And so the next thing that happened was Christian finally made it to the gate. Yes! The person who let him in. Um, in the book, their name is Goodwill. But they really kind of stand for Jesus, right? Jesus has tremendous goodwill and love for human beings. And no matter who goes and searches for him, he promises to always throw open the gate and let them in. So I love this part because it reminds me that no matter um, who it is around me uh, and no matter what they're acting like, Jesus loves them and is waiting to not just transform their life, but to fill them with his love and purpose. And that's an amazing message of hope. And then we saw what happened next. Christian went he, he finally understood Jesus' sacrifice, this king that he's been searching for. He finally got it, and he lost his burden of sin. Finally, it was gone. Christian was free. And we get to see next week uh, what that means. Today's video is really special because the today's testimony is going to be given by our very own Lauren. Um, she has decided to come on and let us know about the journey she's been on towards choosing Christ to be her king and to become a Christian. Um, and so she's going to come on in just a minute and share a little bit about that journey with you. Um, first of all, I want you guys to know that I have known Lauren since she was just a little girl, um, way before she was even in my program. Uh, she was uh, somebody who's been in my life in a lot of cool ways. Her sister and herself are both uh, level 10s, and you guys know that 
you know that means that they've memorized over 80 Bible verses and they know the Apostles Creed and the Lord's Prayer they've read um, a book of scripture they've uh, they're able to recite the Ten Commandments they have all this knowledge uh, but just having all that knowledge is not enough is what you do with that knowledge right that knowledge helps you to know who God is it helps you know about Jesus but you have to then uh, make a decision to do something about it um, Lauren went through a really hard time over the past year. She lost her grandfather, who she loved so much. And right after he passed, I remember her her sadness being so obvious, so visible, so palpable. She was really going through a hard time. And in fact, she was going through a hard time with God. She couldn't understand uh, why God allowed her grandfather to pass. And, but in a funny, strange way, that actually, that, that sadness started her on this journey. And I, I'm going to let her tell the rest of it to you. Um, so I hope you guys will join me in uh, saying hi to Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everyone. So I have a few questions for you. The first one was, how did you notice that God was reaching out to you? And what was he saying? I first noticed when God was reaching out to me when I started doing my devotions for Club 56 for points. And when I did it, it was all about forgiveness, like Jesus forgiving you, and how to accept Jesus into your heart, and that Jesus loves you. And so I thought, oh, well, God's probably chasing after me and wants me to accept him into my heart. So that's what I thought he was saying. Wow. Yes. My, my next question for you is, would you tell me the moment that you knew that God was starting to invite you into this new life as a follower of Jesus? And how exactly did you go about saying yes to him? There's actually many moments where I saw God trying to get me to follow him and he just, I just, he just kept on chasing me, and eventually I said, okay, God, and I asked for forgiveness, and I told him, my plan is your plan, and I want you to use me to do good. I love that. How did it feel after you decided to choose God? Like, how did that decision change you and, and how you see the world? After I chose to say yes to God, I felt like He helped with my patience and self-control. Uh, with my brother and sister, I was arguing with them. And with my parents, I was disobedient. And also with my grandparents, um, and my two grandfathers. And so after the first one died, I was really mad angry at God and then one year later when my second one died I wasn't mad but I was sad but I wasn't mad because I knew that he was in heaven and he was with Jesus and God. Beautiful. Tell me now what advice would you give to another kid who feels like maybe God is, is calling them to give their life to him? Um, what if they're watching this and, and they're wondering if God is calling them? What would you say to them? The first advice that I would recommend is read your devotions and Bible. Those are key things and through that you will see signs, well, things that you see repeatedly or around you and that might be God speaking to you and if you feel in your heart oh maybe God's trying to get my attention then look into the Bible or um, ask someone who knows about God and really get to know him and if you don't think that God's trying to reach out to you just wait and read the Bible and do your devotions until something like God's plan comes into your 
into your sight. So, uh, and God's plan will always work out. Wow, Lauren, thank you so much for that great advice and for just coming on here and sharing so much with us. I really appreciate it. Bye. Bye, everyone. And let's go ahead and we'll, we'll say just a few more things about this um, as we try to wrap up this whole episode where we've just learned so much. I just want to take a minute to think about all of these cool things that we've learned today. So we learned a lot about what it means to actually be a Christian, right? We learned what the word Christian means, to have the Spirit of God filling your being, giving you the power to live and love just like Jesus Christ, right? Get it? Jesus Christ, Christ Christian. Christian. <laughs> Christians follow him. We also learned that being a Christian can look a little bit different on different people because all people are different. And God who loves you and made you to be uniquely you does not transform us into automaton robots <laughs> when he fills us with his spirit. Even though I, I bet that would have been a lot easier. But no way. He Instead, he really partners with us. He comes alongside and works through us to allow us, you and me, the amazing privilege of harnessing his universal power in order to love and heal and reveal him to the rest of his beloved children. It's really cool, but Christians are sent on a mission of love to the whole world. It's awesome. And like we saw today in the play, and like we heard from Lauren in her testimony, this special mission that Christians are called on, our own personal journeys, uh, when we are called to follow Christ, they also have a lot of things in common with other people's journeys. Remember, uh, both Lauren and Christian had burdens of sin that they didn't like but couldn't seem to get rid of, right? Christian had stopped listening to his Bible and instead listened to worldly wise men just because she was dressed fancy and had made fun of him. Um, but then he had to find out the hard way that she'd just been wrong. And then remember, Lauren had said that she'd had a hard time being kind to her brother and sister and honoring her parents before she said, yes to God. But then both Christian and Lauren eventually realized that once they stopped trying to fix these problems on their own, once they brought their burdens to Jesus and asked him to forgive them and change them and fill them, that their burdens lightened, they even disappeared. And do you remember what Lauren said? I really love this. She said that she had decided to finally just say, okay, God. Yes, that, that was the big moment. Just saying, okay, to God. And that's the kind of big moment that true Christians actually have over and over again during their life. It's not just a one-time thing, right? They have to take what they've learned about who God is and who he made them to be and what he's calling them to do and they have to say yes. And because God is so huge and awesome, there's always something more to learn about him. There's always something more to learn about his path for your life. And for instance, in my own life, when I was your age, I remember uh, doing just that. And in fact, I remember everything about that moment. I felt like God was really just calling me, inviting me to be part of his family, his team, asking me to choose him. And I just really wanted to do it. And everything I had learned about him up to that point was so beautiful. And so I remember I, I got alone in my bedroom. I just got with God. I, I I remember I laid down on my tummy. There was nothing special about that. That's just what I wanted to do. I was on the floor and I just, I prayed for help and I prayed for his forgiveness. And I just said yes to what I knew about him and what I knew about the plan that he had called me to at that point. And you know, that's just what Lauren did too. Um, remember, I loved what she said. She said to God, your plan is my plan. I just loved that. Um, but. You guys, that wasn't the only time that that happened in my life. In fact, when I was a teenager and I started to know more about God, I felt called to say yes to Him again, to choose Him, to say yes. And then when I was 25, I, I actually felt called then to start being someone who teaches others about God. And since that was like a whole new kind of adventure and calling, I got alone with God again and said yes again. And honestly, it felt completely new and life-changing every time. And, and I was changed every time. 
So being a Christian means being in a relationship with God, a relationship where he talks to you and leads you and also really loves you and takes care of you and teaches you. What it's not is a magical prayer that you say one time and then spend the rest of your life trying to convince yourself that, yikes, hopefully that was good enough. (laughs) While you just keep on doing you and living powerlessly and with enmity towards others. No, that is not it. Listen, when you feel like God is asking you to say yes to him, that's an invitation closer to him. It's it's an invitation to step into the arms of the maker of the universe, your good, good father who knows you and loves you and who, as you get to know him through answered prayer and revelation and scripture and the quiet prodding of his spirit is going to prove to you that you and him are so intertwined, you're so one that Even death could never separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Being a Christian is all about being in a relationship with God, a follower of Jesus, every step, every day, the whole way. And if you want to talk to someone about doing just that, then you can talk to your mom or your dad, or you can call or FaceTime or Zoom chat with me. Whatever it is, listen, God has put people in your life who are eager to help you follow him. So I hope you'll do that. I'll see you guys next week. I love you. Bye. One, two, three. I am a sea.